Hi, uh, today I want to talk about using the MACD uh, to study uh, stock charts. So typically when you use a chart um, studying the price action, what you do is you study uh, the volume profile. So when you do support and resistance, um, you look at the volume profile, which is here on the right, um, and you draw a horizontal line um, where the most volume is, and that usually gives you an idea of where your support level is or your resistance. In this case, there's a little bit of uh, resistance uh, to the upward side right around here as well. So it works a little bit differently on a MACD chart. So when you're doing support resistance, it's still support is still on the lower side here and resistance is still on the upper side. Um, but what you do is you kind of estimate where the bounces are. So um, basically because it's an oscillator, um, it's gonna oscillate around zero line um, and go up and down and basically the level of support is where it typically turns around. So you can see that right in here, um, typically right around in this area, um, is where we see a level of, uh, excuse me, support. Um, and then you can see on the top bar here, um, this is typically all these lines here show a level of resistance. So what you can use that for um, is you can draw some lines um, let me get switch to line here and you can start to see, I'm going to switch to a blue line uh, so you can see the top. So what you can do is I draw a center line here, this red line that turns into yellow. That's a center line that's just basically cool into this center line here. Um, so I do a marker here to draw approximately where I started that line up here and I draw a center line down there. And then I draw two top lines and then a bottom line. So what that tells me is there's a channel um, even for uh, the MACD. So I know that the MACD is actually decreasing here um, and I can see that uh, it's on a channel. So much like you do a channel, uh, you can also see the channel here, um, but it's kind of not as clear, right? It shows kind of a wedge, um, whereas the channel line is more clear on the MACD. So sometimes it can be helpful to use the MACD and this is exactly why I'm talking about it. So you can see this middle line shows that the top of the channel, it's gonna kinda uh, run down here and then right around here uh, is where the channel is gonna break. So it's expected to stay within these levels, maybe hit a new low here um, on the MACD um, and just keep going lower until you get to right about here. So, and then um, it's probably gonna go lower. So what happens is that <clears throat> Now, by that time, we'll probably see a low, a new low, like we saw back here or here. Now, let me show you one other interesting thing. So, I switched to a higher time frame here, and now we can start to see. Let me switch back so you can see what happens here. So, basically, these highs and lows typically uh, form a channel here, right? Um, and this is the support line and resistance line. Now, when we go to a higher time frame, Typically what will happen is we'll start to see new lines show up here. So what happens is that these showed up, you can see like back in here, we saw pretty accurate, even though this is in a different day, um, it's pretty accurate for this channel that it did here for this is a support line. So it's kind of an internal, internal support line for a lower time frame. So if you wanna do the five minute chart, <clears throat> we do the same thing, we do it horizontal. And we see there's actually some level there and there's another level here and now when we move back to the lower time frame we won't always see those lines um, on there so we might have to zoom out a little bit here to see that so you can kind of start to see some of those lines um, kind of shows up in here um, so you can see that that actually corresponds to the top of those peaks so on a five minute chart um, these are the more of the uh, lines so let me switch back here so you can see so that shows right there that these peaks <coughs> um, are more on a bigger time frame, and you can see that those are accurate there. So we can keep doing that, and it's still accurate um, on the one minute time frame. We shouldn't really see, uh, we should see it bounce off of this every once in a while, but then every five minutes or so, you might see uh, some bounces off of uh, some higher level time frames. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that around this point is when we would expect a break uh, out of this zone and perhaps to the lower side. So 
when when this when this keeps following this trajectory and hits this point, right in there is when we should expect to see a breakout. Um, so that gets us the ideas, or uh, a possibly uh, before that we can see a reversal. So um, those are the main things I want to discuss. So kind of closing remarks here um, is that. You know, as you zoom out, you can start to get different uh, patterns on these highs and lows. And you kind of get an inner and an outer uh, layer. So you can see that there's uh, bounces off of these extremes, which becomes more and more extreme as you get uh, the support line. Uh, is Here is a more of a resistance line on the top. Uh, but each of these lines, you can kind of say um, it's more common to see uh, movement around this yellow line than it is, say, than the blue line, right? Anyway, I hope this uh, study of the MACD has really helped you out. Um, draw some lines, uh, do some uh, diagrams on it, um, and see what you can find. Um, you can uh, most likely uh, easily find support and resistance levels like we draw here. Um, and then you can also find breakouts um, and reversals uh, pretty easily. Um, so give it a try. Uh, let me know what you think. I uh, hope this helped you out. See you.